Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going over the good and the bad of the 2020 Game Awards. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, if you're anything like me, the best part about the Game Awards are the game announcements. Now, fortunately, this year there were a ton of them. I'm not going to go over each individual game or else we'd be here all night. I'll go over the ones that I thought were most important. One of the biggest announcements of the night was from Nintendo, the new Smash DLC character. It's Sephiroth. I was actually shocked with this announcement. I did not expect that Sephiroth would have been added to the game. I had a short list of characters who I thought it might be, and Sephiroth was definitely not on that list. So here was my short list for who I thought was going to be the DLC character. The Nintendo lawyer with the power of C and D letters was my first choice. I could have sworn that's who it was going to be. Doom Guy was also on the list as well as Master Chief and for some reason I thought it actually might be those Fortnite characters. And looking at the results here, most of you also agreed with my top choice. 45% of you agreed with me that it was probably going to be the Nintendo lawyer with the C and D letter. Some of the other guesses were Crash Bandicoot or Geno, Cosmos, Power Lawyer, Cosmos again, and uh... Minecraft Steve. Not joking, I've already seen people complaining that Nintendo added yet another sword character to the game, but Sephiroth is pretty cool. Now as for me, I don't think I'll be picking up Sephiroth. I mean, the character is cool, but I've already got my mains. I'm already happy with Ken and Ryu and Terry and even Mario and Link if I want to goof around. There's really a lot of characters in this game, and I think most people will probably be the same. They might test out Sephiroth to see how he is, but they'll probably already be set with their main characters. But I could be wrong though, let me know in the comments below if you actually plan on using Sephiroth as your main. Next up, we got a really cool Panzer Dragoon trailer. This is going to be a free-to-play game available on PC, and it's also multiplayer. It looks pretty darn good, but the problem is it's not Panzer Dragoon. This one is called Century Age of Ashes. This next game announcement was pretty huge. If you're a Rare Games fan, you should be pretty darn happy with this one. Perfect Dark is coming back. Yes, Microsoft is resurrecting Perfect Dark. While the trailer showed us a lot and didn't at the same time, it started fueling rumors. We didn't see gameplay or really anything like that for Perfect Dark. But since Microsoft is working with Rare again, reviving old series, maybe, just maybe, we'll see a remake of Banjo-Kazooie and possibly Conquer. There were a lot of people excited about this one. This one isn't so much a trailer as an announcement. But if you're a Mass Effect fan, Mass Effect is coming back. We really don't know anything about the plot or what the game is going to look like, and announcement trailers can look considerably different than the game. All we know is that Mass Effect will continue, and I'm pretty pumped for that. Monster Hunter Rise was announced a while back, but the demo will be coming out in January. This game here is called Fist. The characters in the game look really weird, but the combo system looks like a lot of fun. This game looks like it might be a blast. This game is a very interesting one. It's called Season, and they call it an atmospheric adventure game. It doesn't look like it's very fast paced at all, but it looks gorgeous. I'm hoping this is a nice relaxing chill style of game. Sometimes it's nice just to take a break from the fast paced run and gun games and relax a little bit. Now Crimson Desert was announced back in 2019, so it's been around for a while, but they've never showed gameplay of it. Well, last night at the Game Awards, they did show some gameplay and this thing looks incredible. There are some frame rate issues in the trailer, but at the same time, the game is still under development, so that's kind of to be expected. This, I think, is going to be an incredibly popular game. The bad part about this is it won't be available till winter 2021 at the earliest, which means it's not even going to be up for any awards in next year's Game Awards. Hopefully, though, in maybe next year's Game Awards show, we'll see some updated gameplay. Dragon Age got a trailer, but it didn't show any gameplay. I suppose people might have some questions. Back for Blood was revealed. It's a zombie game that looks pretty fun. It looks pretty cool with some interesting characters, and the zombies have very interesting abilities. This zombie here hops around with some extra arms and is also kind of Spider-Man. This game is going to be a fast-paced first-person shooter that looks like it'll be a ton of fun with friends. You'd think this one would be called Left for Dead, but it's not. This is called Back for Blood. There's still a 4 in there, but completely different game altogether. It will be coming out June of next year, but there is an alpha starting on December 17th. So if you want an early sneak peek at the game, sign up here and hopefully get on the alpha. 
Now this one is very interesting. It's called the Callisto Protocol. And if you're a fan of Dead Space, then you should be a fan of this. It's the creators of Dead Space making this game. The part that makes it really weird is it's set in the PUBG universe far into the future. I don't necessarily know what that means or if it even makes sense here, but apparently that's the case. This is going to be a survival horror game, but we really don't know much more than that. There was no gameplay that was shown. The Callisto Protocol is coming out in 2022, which gives them quite a bit of time to really explain this whole PUBG thing. After about 100 years, Capcom has finally remade Ghosts and Goblins. This one is called Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. It's exclusive to Nintendo Switch, I think, and it comes out in February of 2021. The graphics on this, Look all right, I like the original graphics a little bit better, but this game does look interesting. Master Chief will be coming to Fortnite along with Blood Gulch in creative mode. I'm really excited about this announcement, not necessarily for the Fortnite reasons, but because it might introduce a bunch of younger gamers to Halo. If you're a mobile gamer, Just Cause was announced for Apple and Android. This one looks a little interesting. I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be a pay to win kind of situation or just a one time fee. With the way games are going nowadays, it's probably going to be pay to win, especially on mobile, but I'm willing to at least try it out. It says it's coming soon, and if it's free to play, it might be a little bit of fun before you hit a paywall. This one is very interesting. It's almost like Cyberpunk meets Van Helsing meets Left 4 Dead meets Red Dead Redemption. It's called The Evil West, and it looks like a bunch of zombies and mutated characters in the Wild West. I really like the looks of this one. There was no gameplay, just this announcement trailer, but it does look like it might be a lot of fun. And The Evil West is coming out in 2021, so pretty soon. Now let's talk about the good and the bad about the Game Awards. We'll start out with the good. First and foremost, the game announcements were amazing. This seemed like a streamlined version of E3. There was game announcement after game announcement, and that's what a lot of people were tuning in for, myself included and this was pretty great. I also like that indie games were featured in a bunch of different categories and won some as well. It seemed that the awards were up as a free-for-all as opposed to being reserved for those big production companies. The Among Us team here won a couple of different awards and it was really nice to see how excited they get for winning. Now, even though the game awards are getting better and better each year, there is still some stuff that really bothers me. The worst part about the game awards in my opinion, at least one of the worst parts, is the fact that they rush through a bunch of different categories. They list the category name, they list the games, they pick a winner, they move on to the next one. To me, this kind of cheapens the award. It removes some of the prestige. I wouldn't mind seeing the winner of the award able to speak. I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit about the games or maybe even a little bit more about the category. I completely understand they're on a time crunch in order to get this show on the road. But at the same time, maybe they could just increase the length of the pre-show in order to go over some of those awards. Now this year for the gaming awards, they had great hosts, but I wish they brought in more presenters. If you look at the Oscars, if you look at the Grammys, they bring in a bunch of different presenters to go over the nominees and go over the winners, and that's usually artists and actors. If they brought in recognizable faces in the gaming industry, maybe some pro players, maybe some popular streamers, popular content creators, I think that would be a lot better. I mean, they brought in some, but they could bring in a lot more. There are a ton of people they could have brought in that would be instantly recognizable. And I think it would boost interest. I found the Game Awards this year to be better than last year, which is a huge compliment considering we're in a pandemic and what they can do is severely limited. The Game Awards, being blunt here, they used to be pretty painful to watch and they've gotten a lot better over the years. This year was actually not too bad. I'm hoping they continue on to improve. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know in the comments below what you liked about the Game Awards. Let me know what you didn't like. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.